Only two hours left to reach top 1200. Can I make it? Let's find out. Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at Red Black Goblins updated with Historic Jumpstart. And this is a deck I've been playing quite a bit off camera recently, boasting a 77% win rate with a lot of games played in Mythic, so that's not too shabby. And this just has been my go-to deck to rank up and get those quick and easy wins. And a lot of the easy wins come from Muxus, Goblin Grandee. This is still our primary game plan, ramp into Muxus to win the game. The 4-4 Legendary Goblin Noble, when it enters the battlefield, reveals the top 6 cards of our library, and we put all Goblin creature cards with mana value 5 or less from among them onto the battlefield. And when Muxus attacks, it also gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn for each other Goblin we control. So Muxus can often win the game on the spot, especially if we find some of our haste-enabling goblins. We've got a full playset of Goblin Warchief, 3 mana 2-2, two, two, making goblin spells we cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast, so also helps us ramp into Muxus, and goblins we control have haste. And then there's Goblin Chieftain, 3 mana 2-2 two, two Lord, giving other goblins we control plus 1 plus 1 and haste, and also has haste itself. And then a recent addition is a Battle Cry Goblin, a 2 mana 2 2, and for 1 and a red, goblins we control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain haste until end of turn. So that's yet another way to give our goblins haste. And pack tactics can also generate a 1 1 goblin that's tapped and attacking if we attacked with 6 or more power. So these are all ways to give our goblins haste, and Krenko Mob Boss certainly benefits from getting haste. The 4 mana 3 3 legendary goblin warrior can tap to create X 1 1 rat goblin creature tokens, where X is the number of goblins we control. So very often if we cast a Muxus and find both Krenko and one of these haste enabling goblins, we can tap Krenko, make a whole swarm of goblins that can attack right away, and especially if they're also getting pumped by a goblin chieftain, they can end the game on the spot, besides also just pumping Muxus in case the opponent doesn't have any blocks blockers out. So that's our primary game plan, ramp into Muxus, win the game, hopefully tapping a Krenko in the process. So how do we get there? At 1 mana we've got a full playset of Skirk Prospector, a 1-1 goblin that can sacrifice any goblin to generate a red mana. So Skirk Prospector is quite valuable, and even when ramping into Muxus we want to try to keep Skirk Prospector alive, so we can potentially find more goblins to sacrifice and cast more goblins from our hand, so we can combo off in one big turn. And of course we're happy to sacrifice some of our goblin tokens to ramp into our more powerful goblins. Then at 2 mana we've got a bit more ramp with 3 copies of Wily Goblin, a 1-1 one -one that when it enters the battlefield creates a treasure token, so we can sacrifice a treasure to add 1 mana of any color, also helps us ramp into Muxus, and Wily Goblin, another creature we don't mind sacrificing to the Skirk Prospector to add more mana. So if we go turn 1 Prospector, turn 2 Wily Goblin, turn 3 we could technically already cast Muxus if we sacrifice both goblins, and that could technically win the game, definitely has happened a few times. Then another recent addition is Munitions Expert, a 1-1 goblin with flash, and this is the primary reason to splash black in a goblin stack as you'll notice in the mana base. And when Expert enters the battlefield, we may have a deal damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of goblins we control. So this is our primary removal spell in the deck, and it's great against any creature matchup pretty much. Can even give us a chance against the more explosive draws from the elf deck, being able to kill an early arch druid for instance is very important. And then we also had a full playset of Snoop, a 2-2, that lets us play with the top card of our library revealed, so the opponent also gets to see it, and we can cast the goblin spells from the top of our library, so this gives us a nice source of card advantage, very important in the more grindy matchups. And as long as the top card of our library is a goblin card, the Snoop has all activated abilities of that card. And this is a very relevant ability, especially with Krenko Mob Boss. If we ever find a Krenko, we want to make sure to use the Snoop, even if that means putting a stop in our upkeep, so we can tap the Snoop before drawing Krenko to make a few extra goblin tokens. We've also got Sling Gang Lieutenant, whose ability we can use to sacrifice a goblin to drain the opponent for one. There's Battle Cry Goblin, we can use the plus one plus one and haste ability, and even a Skirk Prospector, every now and then we might want to sacrifice the Snoop to help us ramp into Muxus ahead of schedule. So a lot of interesting abilities we can use with a Snoop. If we have Snoop in play and find a Krenko later in the game, for instance, we can even use the Snoop the turn we find a Krenko to make a few goblins, and then again use it in our upkeep to make even more tokens. So every time you see a Krenko on top of your deck with Snoop, make sure to put a stop on upkeep to get the most out of it. 
then at 3 mana we've already discussed Warchief and Chieftain, and then 2 copies of Goblin Matron, a 1-1 that when it enters a battlefield lets us search our library for a Goblin card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So this can help us find Muxus if we don't have one already, maybe helps us find Krenko if we already have a Haste Enabler, so it just gives us a ton of versatility. And in some matchups the card we want to get is actually Sling Gang Lieutenant, a 4 mana 1-1 one -one that when it enters a battlefield generates 2 1-1 one -one Goblin tokens, and we can sacrifice any Goblin at any time to make the opponent lose a life and we gain one life. So very relevant in a burn matchup for instance where we want to be able to gain a bit of life back and also very important against a 9 life solemnity combo. Even if the opponent has 9 life solemnity we may not be able to deal any damage directly by attacking them with our goblins but we can still drain them with the sling gang lieutenant's ability and that has won me many games against a 9 life solemnity lock. So very important to be able to play sling gang with an already lethal board of goblins in play so that's also where Krenko making a lot of tokens comes in handy. And then we've already discussed Krenko and Muxus. And then quickly discussing a few goblins that didn't make the cut. At one mana there's a new haste enabling goblin, I don't think that one's very good even though it combos well with Krenko. Then at 3 mana I did experiment with a Bandit Lord, and I think that card's okay, you could play one or two copies potentially, and it synergizes well with Krenko especially, making a ton of Goblin tokens, and then we can use the Bandit Lord's ability to deal damage directly to the opponent's face even, or we can use it as removal, but overall found it to be just a little too clunky, and it ended up getting cut. Then at 2 mana of course you can experiment with different numbers on the Battlecry Goblin, which has been quite good for me, but it's not a card that helps you ramp into Muxus necessarily, so I still ended up going with three copies of Wily Goblin. Munitions Expert, also a card that has varied in numbers. At some point I was facing more control decks, so I ended up shaving a few copies of Expert, but right now I'm happy with the full playset because we do face quite a few creature matchups where the Expert is our main interaction. And then at 4 mana of course there's also the Ringleader which we could easily play in the sideboard as a great card in grindy matchups, probably better than Krenko against control decks, but not a card I typically want in the main deck since games tend to be over pretty quickly. And then the mana base includes of course a little bit of black to splash munitions expert and sling gang lieutenant, so we've got a full playset of unclaimed territory, 4 copies of blood crypt, 4 of the black rat pathway, and then 2 copies of haunted ridge which comes into play untapped if we've already played 2 other lanes. And then we've got one copy of Phyrexian Tower, which can help us sacrifice a creature to add double black to our mana pool. So this is yet another way to ramp into Muxus, plays especially nicely sacrificing a Wily Goblin for instance if we don't have a Skirk Prospector in play, and that has won me a few games being able to cheat Muxus into play a turn early. And then we also have two copies of Den of the Bugbear as a nice creature land, especially nice against control decks, being able to activate it after a sweeper to still keep up the pressure is quite nice, although in all honesty in all the games I've played I only recall one or two instances of me activating Den of the Bugbear, but it is quite nice against control. On the flip side I only recall maybe one instance where the Den coming into play tapped later in the game cost me not being able to play my Krenko on curve. And uh, yeah, then we could also potentially play Omori, the Collector, as our companion, although double black is kind of rough since you typically want to have as much red mana as possible, so I don't think it's necessarily worth it to show the opponent that you only have creatures in the deck. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with not the best hand ever, because I do need to draw a couple lands here, but I don't think it's a mulligan either. Just hope to pick up a land or two. Expert could come in handy. Put on green whites. So what flavor of green whites it's gonna be? Presumably a life gain combo deck of some sort. All right, Moon Dancer. So let's play the Snoop. Luckily there's a line on top. So next turn I can expert if needed. Can help us stop the scurry oak combo. It's gonna be a soul warden for now. And a Daxos. So I'm not gonna have an easy time killing the Moon Dancer with Expert. Soul Warden is annoying once we start comboing with Krenko. But let's see here. I think I just play War Chief and then take the hit next turn. I 
we know we're drawing another land, so next turn I can easily double spell. And unless they company to scurry Oak Heliot, we're not at risk of dying just yet. Uh, Skyclave Exiling Warchief is annoying. Take eight. Untap land on top. But now we lost a uh, war chief, so Moxus is still pretty far away. So what's it gonna be? Might just flash in the experts to um, kill something and make a chum blocker. And then on five mana I can go chieftain plus a two drop maybe. Don't think I want to shock myself, so let's pass. Another Skyclave. Some response will flash an expert. Kill the original Skyclave. Which will buy me a little bit more time. And then the expert can shum Trillisara. Opponent's keeping the card on top, so maybe a collected company. Alright, so now we're going in blind. Probably still play the snoop first in case I can play something for free. Right, another war chief. So, probably fine to play that. And then the illusion can shum Trillisara. Can maybe take five, we'll see. Right, there's company, as expected. And it's gonna be Archon of Amiria plus Soul Warden. So it doesn't necessarily kill me here. And then the card we want to find, of course, is something like Krenko to make a lot of chumpers. Even though that's going to trigger Soul Warden a bunch. Alright, so Wily Goblin, probably not worth playing. We'll just go for Muxus. And then we'll have to deal with a lot of Soul Warden triggers. Right, I did find Krenko, triple munitions expert. That's nice. Can I even kill the Moon Dancer here? Probably not, because if I use Krenko, they can put more counters on it. So I think we just kill all the life gainers which is Soul Warden and Daxos. Do I care about Archon? Not really. Killing the Life Gainers potentially stops a combo if our opponent has Heliot's Curry Oak with the next company. So let's do that. And then I want to target Daxos last, so they gain less life from Creature Zang. So all those triggers happen. And then Daxos is going to die first, and then the Soul Wardens, and then we can use Krenko when Soul Wardens dead. I'll be able to play Prospector thanks to the treasure from Wily Goblin, which then lets me cast the rest of my hand. And then I can pretty much empty my hand. Matron could find another Muxus. Take action, take action, take action. 
All right, so I guess never mind. Archon prevents me from casting more spells here, so that's fine. We'll just activate Krenko and smash. And then do I attack with just Muxus, maybe Muxus and a bunch of 1-1s? One Points at 50. Yeah, I guess we can send in some 1-1s one here. Leave a couple chumpers back. Yeah, I think still killing all the life gainers makes sense to make a combo less likely, but killing Archon would have let me cast a lot more spells here, potentially even eventually killing all the life gainers or just killing the opponents. But we just would have had to sit through a lot of life gain triggers. But now a single company shouldn't be able to kill me. So that's why our play also makes sense. Raidan and Pride Mate, that's fine. So we should be in the clear. Just play Chieftain or Battlecry Goblin and pump my team a few times. So they may not even be playing the Scurry Oak combo, maybe just Green White, kind of life gain company. Playing a more aggressive build with Pride Mate and Moon Dancer. So, guess we'll double block. Another Muxus. Yeah, I guess that's probably the play. Activate Krenko now, in case I find another Krenko. And we did find another Krenko plus a Chieftain and a Siege Gang, so this was more than enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand. Prospector into Snoop, hopefully draw a few lands. And then... Guts or Haste Enablers. And this hand could just beat down with Chieftain into Sling Gang. Doesn't necessarily need Muxus or Krenko. But of course, I would be happy to eventually cast those as well. Facing Hive of the Eye Tyrants into Gutter Bones, so maybe a black aggro deck. Alright, no land so far. Still play our Snoop. And the land on top is good news. So next turn, probably go for Chieftain. Or we could War Chief to make our future goblins cheaper as well. Take two. Probably gonna see two more one drops. There's Dread Wonder. Opponent may be debating a fatal push on one of my two goblins. But they're gonna wait. Mux is on top. And just gonna play Warchief, I think. And then we know about Fatal Push, so they're probably gonna push the Prospector. Now that they see Muxus to prevent a mana discount. Yep, that's fine. I can float the mana, but there's nothing I can use it on, so. All right, so next turn, wouldn't be able to play Muxus quite yet. There's a spawn of Mayhem on three. That's their big power play. And hello, Krenko mob boss on top of my deck. So that lets me combo off this turn pretty much. So how about play Prospector and Chieftain, then activate Snoop and then I might be able to play Muxus as well. And then our opponent's just gonna concede. So just to recap what would happen here, I would activate my Snoop, which would make four goblins. Then I could sack three of those to cast Krenko to activate again, make even more goblins, and then cast Muxus and probably just win the game on the spot. And yeah, that shows the power of Snoop randomly hitting a Krenko on top. 
on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Hand is not ideal, but I can maybe cast a turn three, Krenko, and hope to find some hasters afterwards. We'll try it. It is an explosive hand, especially if we top deck something like Muxus. But probably happy to just find any of our haste enabling goblins. So we can maybe use Krenko the turn we played. Pwn on blue reds, so can expect some cheap burn spells. Another Krenko. So we'll hit for one, play Prospector. And then the hope is that they're not Jeskai Control, which has an easier time dealing 3 damage as opposed to like a blue-red deck that often only deals damage in increments of 2. Right, okay, so it looks like a Phoenix type of deck. Of course they can have Unholy Heat, eventually deal 6. But uh, plan's gonna be to play Krenko next turn. So I can attack first and then play Krenko second Prospector. Sprite Dragon flies over for one. Alright, well, don't have much of a choice. A sad Krenko without haste. And then I need to draw any castable goblin, hopefully, next turn. Opponent considers. So, do they already have Delirium, Instant, Lands, Creature? So, no Delirium yet, at least. So, Krenko might be safe. Another gaze. Grows Sprite Dragon and finds Phoenix, which they presumably can get back, killing Prospector with a play with fire. Sure. So we're getting hit for seven, and our battlefield doesn't look very good right now. Alright, War Chief is something, but. Still probably losing the race. Could play my second Krenko just to make more tokens next turn. Opponent with an upkeep gaze. So if they have another play with fire, are we dead? 8, 9, 10, 11, we would go to 1. Still no delirium, it seems. If War Chief survives, we could top deck Muxus and cast it. Opponent may be escaping the Ox. Alright. So they'll have a blocker on the ground. As we get attacked for maybe just five. If our opponent thinks they can kill us next turn anyway. Alright, Muxus, let's go. Battle Cry Goblins, not bad. So, sequencing. Play Battle Cry Goblin. Activate Krenko. And then I think we just attack and double activate Battlecry over playing another Krenko. And then we want to make sure to wait until after we make the token. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, Battlecry Goblin showing its worth here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is mana light but powerful, so if I just draw a third land we're good to go. 
turn on elves, not what we wanted to see, but a munitions expert can save us, so if they have turned to archdroid, I can actually kill it. So, don't hate my spots. Do they have turned to archdroids? Just another elves, alright. So now they could still go for a company next turn, and I wouldn't be able to stop it, so... Probably hang on to Expert to kill a Lord and play a Wily Goblin. And pass it back. Could still play Expert in a pinch by sacking the Treasure and the Wily Goblin, but that's a last resort. The Elves deck doesn't really beat an active Krenko unless they're playing Crater Hoof Behemoth. So it's just going to be a clan caller for now. I'll take five. All right, sadly no land. So what are my options? I can play Munitions Expert on clan caller before they get a chance to find another. Because if they play a land next turn, they could activate Castle, which lets them search a second clan caller. So I could stop that with Munitions Expert. I could play Krenko, but it likely leaves me dead on board. So I think main phase expert is the play, but I'm not happy about it. And I'll just pass it back. Yeah, we have double Krenko, but just not a mana to deploy it. Opponent's got two cards left. If those are any good, we're in trouble. Opponent sends in the elites, so they might have a company they want to kind of ambush us with, but maybe not. Right, just take four, that's fine. And a sentinel, so our opponent kind of ran out of gas, which gives us hope. Just want to get Chieftain in play and then activate Krenko. All right, land is good. I think it's still Chieftain first and then Krenko, because this will give us better blocks. So hopefully we can dodge another payoff card for a turn. Our Archroot, unfortunately, going to pump their team as well. So now we're going to have to make some ugly blocks. And the more we trade off, the weaker Krenko gets. So yeah, we just needed to dodge an Archdruid for one turn here. And uh, now what? So let's say we take the hit from the Elites. And trade off for Lanor Elves. Yeah, it's not great. If I block like this, I'm still taking 10. So Chieftain has to block. Which means I don't think I can win anymore. Double blocking the elites is an option, but I don't think uh, we can absorb enough damage for that to work. Yeah, that's a shame. Alright, take eight, down to one. And the Dan coming into play tapped is not gonna help. Alright, I think we're dead. Can play Krenko, but. That's going to be game over. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand's not particularly explosive. We're facing Gigantha. I have seen burn decks with Gigantha, I've seen colorless ramp decks, sacrifice decks, so could be a lot of different decks. Don't think I mulligan. If I find a third land, Matron could also find our Prospector to make more mana. And a third land we did find. Alright, opponent on a burn deck. So Matron might end up getting Sling Gang Lieutenant. This hand's not great against burn. Pretty slow. Although a turn to Roiling Vortex is not the end of the world. So, probably still play Snoop on Curve. Maybe they'll end up killing it with removal, even though that might mean shocking myself with Blood Crypt, which I don't love. 
So maybe I do just play Tamped Blood Crypt and pass. Sure. I have two Cranquas in hand, so the Snoop is unlikely to be able to activate Cranquas ability. Opponent just stomps my face. To enable a secure the critics down to 12. Alright, then sadly comes into play tapped. So is it now time for Snoop or do I just play Chieftain in the hopes of being able to activate Cranko next turn? I think it might be Snoop plus tap land. And then next turn hopefully I can still get Matron going in combination with maybe a Sling Gang to gain life back. Munitions Expert can help me take out Bone Crusher. So opponent's just gonna pass. Krenko Mux is on top. So what's the play here? Might just be Krenko. Attack for two. As opposed to Chieftain, just to be mana efficient. Although we know we're not drawing a land. Do I go for Matron Sling Gang now? Do I just Chieftain Smash for 5 and then next turn Krenko? Opponent didn't play anything, which is kind of suspicious. So they might just have more burn spells in hand. If I go down the Chieftain Krenko path, then it's going to be a while before a Matron for Lieutenant is a problem. But it does present the fastest clock. So we'll see. Opponent takes it. And it's gonna be a second right end of turn. Well, that was highly unexpected, but fair enough. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Prospector into battle cry, hopefully draw land three. And this is just a nice aggro draw with double chieftain to beat down. All right, there's a land perfect. Opponent on a white deck. Could be a 9 lives combo situation. Portable hole gets rid of. Prospector after a long pause. And there's Muxus. So we could expect some 4 mana sweepers from their deck. Rest in peace I don't care about, but it does also Confirm our suspicions of a potential 9 life Solemnity deck, but our opponent missed land 3, so they're probably just dead here. Uh, opponent's at 1, but a hasty chieftain can finish them off even if they vanquish the horde here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Got a nice balanced hand, a bit of ramp for Muxus, a bit of removal, we've got our Haster. So tap Blood Crypt on one, Territory on two, Haunted Ridge on three. Facing blue-red. Play our Wily Goblin. And then could go for War Chief, which makes it possible to already play Muxus on the following turn. All right, Jeskai controls. Her opponent probably has an Archmage's Charm available. I would rather get Chieftain countered than War Chief, I think. So we'll play Chieftain. They might just have a removal spell. Lightning Helix, fair enough. The control matchup can either be very easy or very difficult. The games where my opponent went turn 2 Magma, Opus, turn 3 Mystic Mastery to cast Opus and have a 4-4 on defense, those have been pretty tough. If we just manage to resolve Muxes, the game usually ends, but looks like our opponent's keeping up counter magic. 
I could play War Chief into Battlecry Goblin this turn. If the War Chief resolves, I could just play Battlecry and activate. Could play another Chieftain. Kind of liking the War Chief plus Battlecry plan. Sometimes you also just end up drawing all your munitions experts and the opponent doesn't have any creatures for you to kill, maybe a shark token here or there, or maybe a planeswalker to finish off, so you can definitely draw the wrong half. I'm pretty happy if we can get a counter spell out of their hand, opponent's just gonna draw two since they were about to miss a land drop. Now the fact that they didn't counter and just drew could also imply that they have a sweeper next turn, which makes me not want to play Battlecry Goblin right now. Because if they cast a Sweeper next turn, I'll be unable to play Muxus. I want them to cast a Sweeper, and then we want to untap and have the mana to Muxus. So that's not necessarily the case here. So in that case, I'll just hit for three. Because Battlecry Goblin is actually a pretty great follow-up to a Sweeper. Ah, it's going to be Hallowed Fountain tapped instead. So they probably have another Archmage's Charm. Now that we have the land and the treasure, I'm comfortable, you know, having the opponent wipe the board so I can then untap and Muxus. So now I'm liking maybe Battlecry Goblin, see if that gets countered, or maybe even Chieftain. I'm happy if this gets countered and then I can still Battlecry activate. And this is a lot of damage coming up. So I want to attack first and then activate Battlecry after getting the extra token. Your haste goblins being able to pressure the opponent even after a sweeper and even your creature land, those are all great. And then if the opponent taps out at any point and you get to resolve a Muxus, you could just win the game on the spot. So overall, I've been pretty happy with the control matchup. That opponent's going to draw two again. So managed to play around those counter spells quite nicely, and now if they wipe the board, Muxus is very likely to just end it. And Steam Vents untapped, opponent is gonna end the game on their own terms. Alright, sweet. Well, we had a pretty good run with Goblins, I'd say. Made it to the top 1200. Let's check how much time is left. Looks like a little over an hour, so yeah, pretty quick run with goblins, could easily keep playing, would probably rank up a little bit more. As I've said in the introduction, the deck has been treating me quite well, the highest win rate deck that I've played for a stretch of time. Of course, if you play like five games with a deck, the data is not necessarily significant, but I've been playing this for over 80 games now, so I feel like I've got a pretty large sample size. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.